I've watched 84 prospects so far in the 2024 NFL draft class, and there are five players in particular coming out of the FCS who I think could have a legitimate impact on your fantasy football rosters. Now, folks, I understand when you hear FCS, you don't immediately think of fantasy football impact, but it is important to point out here that over the last few years, we have had several impact fantasy football players who have come out of the FCS. And at the Rookie Big Board, we dig deep. No stone is left unturned. So it is important to take a look at these types of guys that you could get either late in your rookie drafts or you can make them premium targets after the draft when it comes time to make those free agent waiver wire claims. Before we jump into the five guys here, I want to take a moment and just emphasize my point here on the type of talent that can come out of the FCS. Cooper Cup has uh, historically made an impact coming out of Eastern Washington. I think his story is pretty well known. Obviously has been a wide receiver one over the course of the fantasy football landscape for a while. Jarek McKinnon, a really solid flex type running back guy to Georgia Southern. Then you have Dallas Goder, Tucker Craft, both coming out of South Dakota State. We will talk about the Jacks. And both of these tight ends are very much uh, legitimate values here in Dynasty Leagues at this point. Uh, Rashid Shahid came out of essentially nowhere out of Weber State, put up over 700 receiving yards last season. And then, of course, Christian Watson with seven receiving yards as a rookie, you know, off and on with the injuries last year, but nonetheless is still in that wide receiver three range for dynasty fantasy football value. So there are some legitimate real examples over the course of just the last few drafts of guys that have made an impact out of the FCS. There's also a few guys that I left off this list that have blips of fantasy football relevancy, right? I'm thinking of a DeAndre Carter, a Pierre Strong, uh, you know, even Xavier Gibson uh, with the Jets last year was the preseason hero. So these guys absolutely could be rising in value over the next couple of months. I'm going to start here with my favorite guy out of the FCS in this draft class. If you've been watching the Rookie Big Board YouTube channel for a while, you already know this name. It's Isaiah Davis out of South Dakota State. I'm a big fan of this big man. He's coming in at 6'1", 220, and he plays physically dominant. Now, when I'm watching FCS tape, you always have to try to you know put that defense in context, right? Who are they playing against? So when I'm looking at my running backs in particular, I don't want to see them physically overwhelming FCS defenders. I want to see them physically dominating and Isaiah Davis physically dominates against defenses he, he's strong he's got a low center of gravity uh, when he's not running the ball they use him as a lead blocker and he clears space in front of him when he is running the ball he's shifty between the tackles he's got quick footwork he sees space well he hits cutback lanes very well and he wastes no time getting off the line of scrimmage he pops well and accelerates nicely downfield he has some of my favorite running back tape in this draft. I'm all in on Isaiah Davis in the third round of rookie drafts, in the fourth round of rookie drafts. As long as he secures, you know, round four, round five NFL draft capital, I'm going to be leaving with 70, 75 plus exposure to Isaiah Davis. He's absolutely my dude. It's not just the eyes, too, if you're a fan of the stats. You're going to be a fan of what Isaiah Davis has done for the Jacks over the last couple seasons. Last year, he put up 1,578 rushing yards. He had 18 rushing touchdowns. The year before, over 1,400 rushing yards and 15 rushing touchdowns. Now, I mentioned he's a power back, but he does have pass catching ability. 44 receptions over the last two seasons. I have to emphasize this, folks. That number might not sound like a lot, but Isaiah Davis really didn't leave the field. I mentioned earlier when he was after when he wasn't taking touches as a running back, he was lining up as a fullback and actually blocking for the guy who was rotating onto the field to give him a break. And so there wasn't a lot left over for him to have receptions. But in that situation, in that context, I'm pretty happy with the 44 receptions. I'm a big fan of Isaiah Davis. 
Let's move on here to somebody who's been getting a little bit more hype, and that's Dylan Lobby. Lobby started to gain momentum here going through the showcase circuit, the Senior Bowl circuit earlier this offseason, and he does seem to be a little bit more of a household name. In fact, when I was talking about my pass-catching running backs in the last video, I did have a comment, where is Dylan Lobby? And I mentioned at the end I was saving him for this video. So let's get into the back out of New Hampshire. Dylan Lauby is a decisive runner. He sees space well. He hits that open space. I like his quick, short area agility. I think he gets off the line of scrimmage well. But what makes him super exciting is his pass catching upside, his pass catching ability. He's got reliable hands, and the Wildcats legitimately lined him up around the field. An NFL team could draft him to use him as a wide receiver or more likely use him in a hybrid role where he lines up both in the backfield and as a wide receiver. He separates well through the midfield, so we're not talking about a guy who just catches balls in the flat. Solid release, good separation, good hands. Lauby is a legitimate pass-catching threat, so especially if you're playing in full PPR or even half PPR leagues, Lauby absolutely should be on your radar as about uh, I'll say a fourth round target. That feels like a nice value for him. When we look at the box score here for Lauby, we're going to see some stats that do pop out. 169 career receptions. That's impressive, folks. 68 of those came in 2023. He, he paired that with 699 receiving yards. That's 10.3 yards per reception and seven receiving touchdowns. Like I mentioned, he can get it done on the ground, and he absolutely shreds on the ground as well. But you look at those numbers, you do see a legitimate wide receiver type production level, which is really exciting. But folks, there is no better time of the year to head on over to patreon.com slash rookie big board and check out the awesome resources we have available in depth rookie rankings and profiles on 84 prospects and counting. Nobody goes deeper here. We get personalized advice through the Rookie Big Board Discord. We have our Trade Talk channel. We have our Roster Overhaul channel. And this type of year, the big one, it's the On The Clock channel where we will help you win your rookie drafts. If nothing else, you have to head on over there. For just $5 a month, you'll get access to the 2024 Rookie Guide, which will be updated the Sunday after the NFL Draft with every drafted prospect including 2024 seasonal projections. There is no better value out there, no better way to win your rookie drafts and get ahead of your league mates than over at patreon.com slash rookie big board. The link to join will be in the episode description. Folks, now is the time. You're watching a video about FCS players. Trust me, this is the type of content you will love. But let's transition here and talk about an actual wide receiver and somebody who I just don't think is getting enough credit. This I mentioned Rashid Shahid off the bat, you know, that type of uh, production seemingly out of nowhere. Ryan Florney out of southeastern Mizzou, SEMO, he gives me that type of vibe. Somebody who could go even round six or seven of the NFL draft, but could make a real impact quickly on an NFL roster. When we look at Florney's tape, what we're going to see is somebody who catches everything thrown his way. There's some really good examples of Florney snagging off-target passes in stride. Folks, it's really hard to quantify this, but I love when I'm watching a wide receiver's film, and I think, that looks easy. It doesn't look like he's overexerting himself. He's making great catches and making it look effortless, right? And when I'm watching Florney's tape, that's what I see. It looks effortless. And I have to tell you, folks, mixed into the Florney tape that I'm watching, it's Kansas State tape. It's Iowa State tape. SEMO is playing up against Power 5, not even just uh, you know, a group of five teams. They're playing up against power five teams, and Florney is playing very well against that competition. It earned him a senior bowl bid, and it's earned him a lot of momentum for good reason. Now, he also did well at the combine. His speed showed up, and it shows up on tape also. He works really well downfield, and I think he displays good short area quickness. He's got a nice release, and he's got sharp footwork. 
So he is a real sleeper candidate for me. I don't think you have to take him with the first 48 picks in your rookie draft, but if you have a five, a six round draft, or again, he could be a priority guy to target with your fab after your rookie drafts end. Absolutely somebody I want on my roster, especially if my leagues are a little bit deeper. Now let's head on over to Monmouth and back to the running back position here to talk about Jaden Sheridan out of Monmouth. Now this is a real home run threat type prospect. Now he is a little undersized here, but he makes up for that with a really scrappy, tenacious run style. He's a shifty runner. He's got quick feet, but you pair those two things together with some really nice contact balance and you have somebody who can really extend a play for a few extra yards, even if pressure gets into the backfield quickly. I like Sheridan's ability to pop off the line of scrimmage, but even more, I love Sheridan's downfield acceleration. That's what I was alluding to when I said he's a real home run threat. Now, there's gonna, there's never going to be a guarantee drafting an FCS running back right? Especially a guy who's probably going to have round six, round seven draft capital. But when you're doing that, look for upside traits, right? Because if you're going to hit, you might as well hit big. His traits also lend himself to some special teams ability. Both of those things are nice check marks when I'm looking at a late round dart throw. Let's pair that up with his box score here, and you're going to like him even more. Sheridan rushed for 1,478 yards in 2023, which sounds fantastic, but relative to his 2022, it almost looks pitiful, where he rushed for over 1,700 yards. His career yards per attempt is 7.3, 26 career rushing touchdowns, and he managed to squeeze in 20 receptions in 2023 on top of those 1,400 plus rushing yards. So Sheridan was absolutely making an impact both on the ground and through the air. Now there is one more player that I want to talk about coming out of the FCS to round out our five guys here. And that's going to be Jalen Coker out of the Holy Cross. Now I got to tell you, relative to the other four, Coker is at the bottom of this list in terms of priority. Guys, for me, in my drafts, but I know he's a, a heavily discussed guy, and I've actually gotten some comments over the last couple of videos asking about Jalen Coker and even over on Patreon. So let's go ahead and talk about Jalen Coker then. I think he profiles best as a boundary threat type guy. He shows nice extension for off-target balls, and he's got physical hands near the catch point. I think Coker is a willing blocker as well, which will help him be valued by NFL teams. For me, Coker is more of a round seven or undrafted type prospect. It's just a little bit too inconsistent with the hands for me. And they just, they're not terrible. They're not horrible. We're not talking about Quentin Johnston hands here, folks, but they're just not as consistent as I would like to see them. So that's why I have Coker a little bit lower. But if you look at the stats here, you will, you know, see some nice pluses from the wide receiver out of the Holy Cross. 59 receptions this past season for 1,035 yards, 17.5 yards per reception. I think that's the number that's getting a lot of folks excited, right? It's that field stretching ability. It's that big play ability. Maybe even if we can only project them for four receptions in a game, you know, that's going to be 55, 60 yards. Then we're going to be still getting pretty solid fantasy production out of them. 15 receiving yards this past season and 31 career receiving yards for Jalen Coker. So there's definitely intrigue there with Jalen Coker. I got to tell you, though, Isaiah Davis, Ryan Florney, those are the two guys. The big takeaway you're watching to the end of the video. So I'm going to tell you, those are my two priority targets. I'm going to be leaving a lot of drafts with Isaiah Davis and Ryan Florney. And then in deeper drafts, I'm absolutely going to get exposure to Dylan Lauby and a little bit of Jalen Sheridan as well. Probably not so much Jalen Coker, but I definitely understand if you'll be getting exposure to him. I definitely understand if you want to gain exposure to the awesome resources available over at patreon.com slash rookie big board. Like I mentioned, folks, the rankings, the personalized draft advice, and if nothing else, the updated 2024 rookie guide. It's well worth trying this type of year to get ahead of your league mates for just $5 a month. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you drop a comment. And thanks for watching.